So what are the solutions? Lately, I've been talking a lot about problems with what I used to believe were solutions. And then people are like, okay. Um, but it would be great if you can talk about what new solutions might be. So fine, I'll try. And I mean, I've been trying to say things like that the solutions are infinite and that we'll find them if we just listen to the people in our communities and listen to our hearts. But I'll, you know, a lot of people know exactly what I mean when I say that. And other people are like, excuse me, uh, Janelle, the lawyer, uh, I, can't, I can't understand what you're saying. Can you please speak a, a little faster and maybe with a little more legal and technical financial language? So, okay, I will talk about the law. Here it comes. But a little backstory is that uh, I and Sustainable Economies Law Center <coughs> and many others, we've been working on solutions or what we thought were solutions. And like, for example, I thought that we could help people take their nest eggs, their savings or retirement, like 401ks, invest it in a portfolio of community-based funds that would in turn lend that money and invest it in local cooperatives and land trusts and other things that help sustain our communities. I made all the sense in the world. But now I see it's actually harmful to encourage this. And I've talked about it in a lot of other writing and videos. So I won't repeat it. But maybe I'll just try to encapsulate that the problem is either the law is going to prevent us and you know, block us from building viable alternatives because of tax and regulations and securities and all these things. So either the law is going to block us or we'll become over, overly reliant on the law and the oppressive tools of the law, including policing, to protect the things that we've worked really hard to build. We could become the very systems of control and domination that we were seeking to dismantle. So I kind of picture us either standing in front of a line of police that are blocking us or operating behind a line of police that are protecting us. And that's, that's kind of the world we live in. And so it's a little bit hard to see like, well, from that dimension, it's hard to figure out, well, where else can you stand in relationship to the law? <coughs> but there are some fun ways to basically shape and reconfigure our economy that transcend the legal boxes and give us a lot of room to move. So I'll talk through a couple legal concepts. Well, first, let's say you have $1,000 and you don't need it right now. And then over here are some people who are going to buy land and then build a community food forest. So you are inspired, so you send them $1,000. If they have set the expectation that you're going to get that money back, like if it's a loan or an investment, then that would be considered a security or an investment contract under the law. And the movement of money in that particular way is very carefully regulated under securities law. So the food foresters would need to jump over all these different legal hoops that basically require them to explain and demonstrate that they have a business model capable of paying the money back, reasonably capable. So that's, what is a security is when you have the expectation of getting it back. But what if you're like, no, nah, I don't need this back. I mean, yeah, I'd rather live in a community that has food forests and so you, send over the thousand dollars so that people can build that food forest. Now, if it's not a tax exempt organization, that could be taxable income to the group of people. Now, why is that? Because it doesn't meet the definition of a gift under section 102 of the tax code. And so if you're giving money with the expectation that people are gonna do some work with it, they're gonna create something in return, like build a food forest in your community, that's gonna be earned income for them and, and they would pay taxes on it. And the, yeah, well, let's imagine, let's imagine you just say, well, y'all are just beautiful humans. I, I love who you are. I love what you do in the world. Just here's some money for whatever you want or need. Now that meets the definition of a gift under the law and it's not taxable. So the Supreme Court, you know, the Supreme Court, they were asked back in the sixties, what exactly is a gift? And they said, well, it's really all about generosity. If it, if it flows from the spirit of generosity and there's, you're not doing it in the expectation of something in return, even like a moral expectation, you're just doing it out of care, then that's a gift. I mean, I love it when the law and the courts have to get all warm and fuzzy like this because actually when they do that, it tells you where are the limits of the law. And when I say the limits of the law, I'm not talking about 
the spaces that are illegal. I'm talking about a different word that we almost never use, illegal. It's a legal activity. A legal is adjective, A L E G A A A L E G A L, meaning it's not within the framework or the concept of law. It's unrelated to the concerns of the law. So when things flow, when things flow according to care and generosity, and there's not a clear attempt to force or control what happens, it's a legal activity. It's beyond the law's field of vision and, and field of control. So the possibilities become vast. And so I'm not saying we should just like surrender all of our resources into the flow. We still need to really nurture highly stable and organized systems, but the the being organized doesn't actually mean controlling and coercing. So a forest is a highly stable and organized system for growing and nurturing many lives. And also indigenous people throughout the world and throughout time have so carefully come to understand those living systems um, and been able to work as part of those systems that, um, that humans have been able to be sustained from and along with those systems, sort of gently tending them. And so like similarly with a food forest, permaculture food forest, you don't just let it go unattended, let crabgrass take over. You gently nurture it. You don't go the other direction in a highly controlled system of industrial agriculture either. Uh, so it's this, it's this space in between. But let's bring it back to money. So for 15 years, um, I've been living in the East Bay area of California, and I've been part of many groups, and we are all kind of together gently tending an ecosystem of economic justice in and around Oakland. And I co-founded Sustainable Economies Law Center in 2009, and I poured a lot of energy and love into that to the point of also running up a ton of credit card debt, which took me about 10 years to pay off. And meanwhile, I had to ask a lot of people for help. And let's face it, sometimes asking for help feels good, other times it just feels icky depending on who you're asking and how they're trying to make you prove yourself to them. And I had to just kiss a lot of feet that, you know, it wasn't fun. But also my educational and race privilege opened a lot of doors. And it wasn't long after the beginning that Sustainable Economies Law Center became something much larger, like a collective endeavor with a lot of coworkers and all of us together asking for contributions. Like more than a thousand people um, have donated to us. We've also provided legal support for more than 2,000. So there's this, there's this flow happening, this give and take. And I'm lucky to have a regular income from Sustainable Economies Law Center now, uh, but I've never stopped asking for help. And we, as an organization, will never stop asking. And in fact, side note, the year 2023, we need to raise a lot of money for 2023. So help. But, you know, I tell that story because it sets the stage for the individual choices I've made. So three years ago, I pay off my credit card debt. And then I somehow, I just sort of automatically started saving money. And I'm like, oh, I'm saving money. And it was this interesting flip because now I'm like, wait, am I doing what I am now, you know, I'd been taught was common sense. Am I a responsible adult now? And how much money should I save? So that was, that was a question. How much should I save? So, and, but by the time I was asking this question, I was already part of an ecosystem. I was surrounded by people in the community that I love and who inspire me and, and who love me and support me, who like, they work hard. They're, they're building the kind of world that I am excited to live in. And many of them, just like me, they ask for support. So if I were to ask my like left brain, how much money should I save? My left brain would probably come up with some calculation based on assumptions about the future. I, I don't think, I don't know. How would I answer that question? But if I ask my gut, my heart, my whole body, you know, as part of a living ecosystem of having been part of this for over a decade, like the answer is let that money flow. And particularly <coughs> to people who don't have the same access that I've had. And I'm not just talking about giving to nonprofit charitable organizations. I give, m most of my giving is to individuals and small groups who inspire me, who give me hope. And when I give out of 
love like this and out of my sense of hope and excitement with no direct expectations, it's, it's a legal activity. It's outside of the realm and understanding of the law. It's unregulated, it's easy, it flows without constraints. And that is a system. So it is a highly organized and stable system. Just because people and projects are asking for support, that's not a sign of an unsta unstable or disorganized system. So in our bodies, if a cell is low on oxygen, it releases a protein that hit our blood vessel walls and the blood vessels start producing more cells in the direction of the cell that needs oxygen. And you know, the fact that a cell in our body is putting out a signal f for help and repair, that's not a sign of instability or instability or unsustainability. It's, it's communication. It's a sign of health. It's each cell fulfilling its purpose in a larger, healthy system. So people ask for solutions and I say, this is the solution. Start to move like a cell in the, in the larger living system that makes up your community. And many people already know what this means. And for other people, they feel more, it's scary because they feel isolated. And particularly people who have sought comfort in saving money or sought comfort by moving up power and pay hierarchies so that they wouldn't need to ask people in the community for voluntary support. And I really wanna emphasize this word voluntary because we are all supported. Having money doesn't make you independent. It makes you dependent on support that is provided often involuntarily. So it lets you control and co coerce the labor of others. So like you can go buy food that was cooked by restaurant workers and grown by farm workers, many of whom are working under terrible conditions that they wouldn't choose if they had a choice. So it's involuntary. If you have money, it also lets you use control natural resources and land that other people have been involuntarily excluded from. Other living things have been involuntarily excluded from. So. If that's the situation you're in, one where you've relied on money a lot and you feel isolated, the solution is to start finding every way possible out of it. Show up to things that other people are doing, you know, listen to what's happening in the community, join with others, ask for support, give support, start projects with other people. Also, let those projects fall apart. Maybe even let them blow apart in conflict and disaster. And when that happens, work through it, heal relationships, build trust, get stronger. Because even when things are messy and disorganized, we just need to let these li living systems continue to adapt, evolve, self-organize. And our role is to gently nurture them towards stability, like provide encouragement where needed, discouragement where needed, draw boundaries where needed, but overall resist the urge to control situations and people with solutions, particularly any solution that requires a lawyer because, I mean, look at our world, look at our climate, look at growing inequality. It's kind of like we're tied up in a, a constrictor knot. And it's one of those knots where the more you struggle, the tighter it gets. Like the more we try to control things, the tighter it gets. And so the solution is to move in these illegal spaces to let go of the need to control. And we instantly transcend that knot, that bind it means that we let go of the need to control others and we just sort of, we let things move freely, guided by trust, relationships, love, generosity, care. And uh, that's the note I'm gonna end it on.